Welcome back to another episode of MacBreak Studio. We're looking at Final Cut Pro 10 in Mark's some of his uh, warp speed workflows. Warp speed effects, yeah. This, some of these we're pulling from our warp speed effects tutorial, mm -hmm. uh, which is a follow on to warp speed editing that sort of gives you some ideas of effects you can create in Final sure. Cut. And we've been talking a little bit in the inspector here about these different options, transformations that you can make, different types of cropping. And now I want to move on to uh, the distort uh, tools here and how you can distort a clip and why you might want to. So now there's, that's a tool that people don't really use that much. Yeah, what is that? Why would I want to use that? Well, here's an example where you might want to use it. So I have this shot of Ali here that we've seen before, but this time I want to do something different with her. I'm going to press the V key to disable her to see the clip beneath, which I've got a shot of this TV set. And it's a still shot, and that's that's required for this, okay? Because it's kind of a, a rather simple want, effect, but it's moving. effective. Right, so I've got a, 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 a picture of an empty screen, and I want to put her in it. So, um, with her selected, what I'm going to do is uh, use the Distort tool. And uh, as opposed to the Transform and Crop tool, Shift-T or Shift-C, the Distort tool is Option-D. Option-D to select the it's Distort weird, it's tool. It's not Shift-D, but... I think that does something else. Yeah, of course. Um, so you could use these parameters here in the inspector to try to use it, but it's you just don't want to do that. Right. It's going to be too hard. You want to use the controls right here. So what I'm going to do is just drag on these corner handles. Well, it makes it like rubbery. The image. It make, yeah, and I'm just going to move them right to the edges of the bezel of the TV set here. Pretty easy to do. Yeah. And then to make sure that I've done a good job, I'm going to zoom in really close. I'm going to go in like 200%. And this is just a useful tool because I can see I didn't hit it quite right there. And to be able to zoom in and close and look at your work, stuff I'm used to doing in motion, but it's surprisingly easy to do this stuff right in Final Cut Pro. And get that one a little closer to the edge there. And then go to the bottom left corner and fix that up. Uh, Shift Z to fit it back. And then I'll deselect or I can just turn off the distort hold and we now have this video playing in that um, TV screen. Yeah. Okay, so pretty simple, uh, but a useful thing to be able to do. So uh, what I found is a useful use for the distort tool, especially if you then could take both of these and put them in a compound clip and do a little Ken Burns and push, push it on, on it. Yeah, okay. which we've covered, so I'm not going to do that here, but that'd be another example to add a little bit more movement to the whole scene. So it works out nicely. But you may say, well, that's great, but what if the thing that you are mapping your video to doesn't have nice hard corners like that? So I have another example here where I have this video of the uh, Balloon Festival in, in Albuquerque, New, New Mexico, Mexico yeah. which I highly recommend you go to if you've never been. It's really fantastic. I'm gonna you got to get up too early for me. I think it's, it's pretty early, yeah. yeah. I'm going to tap <laughs> the V key to disable that, and I have a still, just a stock photo of this billboard here that doesn't have nice hard corners. Yeah. So what I'm going to do here is, again, Option D for the Distort tool. And I'm going to distort this down. And this might look, Steve, you did something kind of similar when you did a masking you mean thing the with, the, with the snow globe. Yeah. So I'm going to use the billboard to line up the edges as closely as I can here, about like that. So I have nice parallel lines all the way around. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm purposely not using these control points on the edges because I don't want to distort the overall aspect ratio. I want to keep that pretty consistent. So now that it's in there, that looks great for a starting point, but you probably know what I want to do from here, right? Use a mask? Yeah, <laughs> use a mask. So I'll go down to uh, the effects browser, to the mask category, and I'll put a shape mask on there. And then what well, we need look, to do... That shape mask has a relative... The general shape of that rounded corner it's, thing. It's not bad, yeah, but I can't access it right now because my distort tool is still active, so I need to click it to um, disable. disable it, yeah. And in this case, I really don't want any feather, so I'm going to drag this outside feather um, red control, line here, yeah. control, down so I don't have any feather, and then I'm going to drag the left side. Notice when I drag the left side, the right moves as well, mm -hmm. which works for me for a certain amount. It fills it pretty well. And then I'm going to use this ball here. It affects the roundness. And now I want to move the right side without the left side. So here's where uh, holding down the Option key lets me move just the right side or just the bottom, just to fill that in a little bit better. Get a nice that look like that. Clean. So now I'll just deselect. I'll click on Effects to deselect the shape mask so we don't see the outline. 
and then I've got a pretty good map of that video mapped to the billboard. That looks really clean. Okay. So just a, a simple idea of a, of a way, a couple of ideas about how you can use the distort tool in order to uh, map video to a right, still. Right, because essentially you want to corner pin, you want to match the perspective of what, uh, of what it is, right. what you're compositing. And if, if your thing you're matching to is video, so that where it moves, then you're going to want to use something like TrackX, TrackX. to be able to do that. Um, it's a great tool in Final Cut Pro where a plugin takes you further, but if you've got a still you're mapping to, you can do this very easily, and then you can put the whole thing in a compound clip, and either just push in with Ken Burns, I'll show an example here that we, we show in our um, Warp Final Cut yeah. Warp Suit Effects tutorial, where I actually push into the whole billboard to show, to come full screen to the video. Oh, that's nice. Okay, by distorting the whole video, and then, I'm sorry, by distorting the compound clip, and then we come in and actually push into the screen. That's nice. So, a couple ideas about how you can use uh, the distort tool. I thought that might be useful. Yeah, fantastic, excellent. So, if you want to know more about uh, Mark's warp speed effects, check out his new tutorial. We just released it a few weeks ago. It's fantastic. It's kind of a companion tutorial to warp speed editing. Um, we got a whole series of warp speed whatever's coming out. We have a, we just, well, we just got to start. We like it. Yeah, we like it anyway. <laughs> So thank you for watching. Check us out at rippletraining.com, um, our free YouTube videos. You're watching one probably now on YouTube or as a podcast. Um, and our Under 5 series, uh, follow us on Twitter and Facebook, usual places. And thank you again for watching another episode of MacBreak Studio.